What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back to bring you the final installment to the short story written by Fabled Wolf called The Last Astartes. So let's jump right into it. As Malik stood, his face for once calmed of the fierceness it normally carried. A shape silently moved to stand behind him. A feminine form, ablaze with scarlet hair enveloping a black helm. Eyes azure and imposing. She stood statuesque and watched the Astartes with a glimmer of interest. Malik's prayers were oddly calming, yet in his semi-trance the slightest sound of shuffling caught his attention. In an instant his eyes shot open and he turned a blurning glare onto nothing. He glanced behind him towards the cathedral and saw nothing. Perhaps he was going crazy after all. A quick slash, another orc dead. Another slash, yet another dead. Malak had followed this pattern for hours now, fighting amid a sea of green corpses and bright flame for far longer than he had ever fought before. No rest, no respite, no relief from the agony of his overused muscles, nor from the strain of his now gathering bruises and cuts. His armor was torn and scratched, riddled with dents from bullets that the Emperor had so mercifully decided to deflect. His brown hair was now sticky with blood, ruffled from its usual neatness as per the code of the chapter. But his faith and resignation to death had brought him this far. He would push further until his slaves gave out beneath him. The orcs had grown frustrated by now, many of them electing to stay at the base of the stairs until their numbers once again reinforced. Along a distant street that curved around a crumbling building below, a smoke-spitting amalgamation of rusted metal and crude paint rode towards the cathedral. It followed the vague design of a Lehman Rust battle tank, and much to Malik's fury, he realized that the savages had commandeered one of the Emperor's holy war machines. The orc-controlled war machine fired its cannon, and in that moment a sudden weight knocked the Astartes aside. Surprised, he was unable to keep from falling to his back as the blast from the cannon skimmed by where he was standing, colliding with a portion of the cathedral to finally send this unstable structure crumbling to the ground. On his back, Malik's eyes finally bared witness to the elusive ghost that aided him. The woman acrobatically leapt away from him before he could properly react, performing several graceful twists and flips before coming to a halt some distance away. She now made no effort to disappear like she had before, allowing him to scan over the black and white plating that followed her form so impeccably. She carried two long curved blades, humming with a faint energy, and her head was masked in a tall helm, wrapped in blood red hair. Malik's blood ran cold at the realization, a new Xenos threat, one far greater and one far more intelligent than any orc. Yet his mind was divided, his chapter would want him to kill her on the spot, yet she had as of yet done no harm to him. Quite the contrary, she actually had only aided him in his endeavor against the orcs. He did not know her motives, but he decided that he would take no help, even from an Eldar. Malik jumped to his feet as quickly as he could, retrieving his chainsword from the ground. The Eldar maintained her stillness moving only to nod her head in what seemed to be a friendly gesture. Malik eyed her for a moment, hesitantly to look away for the fear of her once again disappearing, before he returned the nod. She then gestured with a blade to the sky, prompting him to glance upward. Small black dots had begun to form in the clouds above, steadily growing in size, and it took Malik a mere moment to realize what they were. And a swath of relief flooded him, the cathedral could still be won. In the moment he had looked away, Malik jumped when the Eldar had closed the distance between them, giving him the slightest shove just as another round from the looted tank below skimmed by and crashed into the cathedral. His first instinct was to fight, but he quelled this feeling when he realized she had yet again saved him. In that moment, the dots above dropped down swiftly and collided with the earth at the base of the cathedral stairs sending orcs flying amid showers of blood in their wake. From his vantage, he could see Astartes dorned in armor not unlike his own, slaying the growing horde in mere moments. When he regarded the Elder again, to his surprise, she remained standing some distance away. Why have you aided me? 
Malik put his voice into confusion, annoyed by the raspy quality attained through the hours of silence that he had suffered through. She stared at him through the eyes of Rahel, her expression shielded by its fierce visage. There was a pause, as if in contemplation, before she spoke with a high-pitched but hardly harmonious voice. Our interests align, Space Marine. How could they, he asked, doubting that she told the truth. Your kind despises mine. She paused once again, dipping her head in what appeared to be thought. What do they call you? the Eldar asked, a question that surprised the Astartes. Malik, he said after a moment's contemplation, Brother Malik of the Crimson Skull's Tenth Company. Lythen, the Elder replied, tapping her blade to her shoulder. You are a strange Malik of the Tenth Company. How so? You stay your hand even before a creature you are taught to kill. It was true that Malik acted against his teachings, and the thought reminded him that the great punishment could result from it. Still, he found that he could not bring himself to strike this woman who had aided him so greatly before. You saved my life, he said pointedly. I shall return the favor by sparing yours. And at that, she gave an elegant laugh. Perhaps then I will have to save yours again when we next meet. This response gave him pause. In a moment of anger rose to his chest. Did she dare mock him? What does that mean? Elaborate, he growled. Instead, Lythen abruptly glanced up, prompting Malik to do the same, and it only took him a moment to see the set of drop pots that raced down towards the cathedral, and not a second later he turned his gaze to the Eldar only to find her absence. She had vanished once again, and he cursed himself for being so careless. Nevertheless, her disappearance left Malik with a strange mixture of curiosity and wariness churning in his gut. At the base of the cathedral, the last of the orc attackers were finally slain. Drop pods had landed throughout the wide hole in the cathedral roof, and from them four squadrons of Ninth Company Space Marines had marched to heroically claim their area for the Crimson Skulls. Malik was met with a fellow Astartes clad in heavy black armor, decorated with bleached white skulls and bones. A signature of the Thanatrum Archon, chaplains of the Crimson Skulls. He stood before the blood-spattered Astartes, and Malik was quick to kneel in reverence. Rise, brother, the Archon said, prompting Malik to do so. Have you stood alone, holding this place from the Greenskins? My fellow brothers fell some hours ago, my lord, Malik responded. I simply carried on their mission until your grace granted me reprieve. Do not hesitate at the gravity of your victory, brother, the Archon said. You have single-handedly tipped the war in our favor. For this great deed, you shall be granted much glory. I only wish to return my brothers of the Tenth Company, my lord. This was a pause before the Archon finally responded. It is to my despair that I cannot grant you this, he said. The words flooded Malik with dread. What happened? The Tenth Company is no more. You are the last of the battle brothers that protected this planet before the arrival of the Ninth and Seventh Companies. The weight of this realization hit harder than any orc weapon had. But their sacrifice will not be in vain. The Archon continued, giving Malik a small glimmer of hope. The Tenth Company will be venerated, their stories archived in our Book of Honor, and you, Battle Brother, will be given the tools to which avenge their deaths tenfold. You will be an inspiration to your brothers and a vanguard of the chapter. As of now, I dub you Thanatarium Archon of the Crimson Skull's 11th Company, the Dead Company. The End And there you have it guys, the epic conclusion to The Last of Stardates. So what did you guys think about this short story? Obviously if you haven't read parts 1 and 2, go do so. Um, there is a playlist entitled The Last of Stardates, so check it out. 23 videos, uh, really epic stuff, all thanks to Fabled Wolf. 
Now, Fabled Wolf, you did an amazing job here. I really felt like I was right there, fighting besides Brother Malik, very uh, visually striking with your words. I really enjoyed it. However, I do want to know more about this Eldar warrior that was aiding him. What is her plans? Like, what is this greater, greater thing that she that she foresees? She did say they were going to meet again, so I wonder what's going to happen. But yeah, really epic stuff, really awesome, really enjoyed this uh, short story. I can't wait, there is a part two. And uh, yeah, that's really awesome. In the meantime, I want you guys to write down what you guys thought about this short story down in the comments below. Uh, give Fabled Wolf your feedback, I'm sure he'll greatly appreciate it. And yeah, we'll go from there. Don't forget guys, we do have some giveaways going on, so check our previous videos to see how you guys can win uh, on those. We also have a Patreon page where a simple dollar helps us give you guys more epic 40k content as well as some giveaways. So check that out. And finally, we do have a Facebook page. We just recently did a Facebook giveaway, so it does pay to uh, like the Facebook page. Uh, you might win some epic stuff, and we do post there each and every day. And that's pretty much all I have for today, guys. This has been The Sound Alchemist, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Oh,